it's a new concept that's actually starting to take foot uh, in South Africa. Um, a lot of things have been discovered, for example, that you find that kids relax a lot easier. Uh, it improves their concentration um, span times and it, it's also um, something new and something that they like. So uh, it, it's a wonderful tool to use to actually educate children in a, a way of going forward with time. I think schoonappers is absolutely a unique manier om om rarig vir um, dieper te kan werk. Die symbool van a schoonapper is, is ek dink spreek oor die siege van die mens um, en dit spreek van metamorfose. En um, in terme van terapie wat ons wou bybring by die kinders is dat ons amal het potentiaal. En die schoonapper is 'n wonderlike metafoor daarvoor. Ek dink wat ons skool uniek maak is die feit dat al die personeel opgelei is in neuroontwikkeling. So hulle verstaan die kind, hulle verstaan die verskillende neuroontwikkelingsprofiele en dit bemagtig hulle om 'n kind onmiddellik te help sa daar 'n situasie opduik. Schoonlapper boerdery, die kinders word betrek daarby deur die verskillende fasette te sien wat 'n schoonlapper telery of boerdery behels. Om jou ook 'n skoon te maak van die rispes om die vlinderse plante te versorg, om die vlinders kost te gee, dat hulle weet wat sy kost hulle gaan kry. So hulle sien die hele symbiotische verhouding, tussen alles wat al gebeur, en, dan kom hulle achter, hulle is ook deel van natuur, want dit wat hulle gaan gebruik, en dit wat hulle gaan inzet, is dit wat hulle gaan uitkry. Die toerusting en infrastructuur wat jy nodig het, is kardinale belang, want as jy omgeving nie recht is nie, kan die vlinders nie oorleef nie. En as jy daai goeie in plek het, kan jy die kinders daarby begin intrek, en saam met hulle begin werk, om die symbiose van natuur te verduidelik. Die therapie sessie sal verskil van persoon tot persoon, want elke persoon is uniek. Nou met hierdie kinders is het baie belangrik om daai uniekheid te verstaan. So as hy sienkie ingaan wat kwaad is, sal hy om voorduidelik kyk hoe rustig is hierdie vlinder. Hierdie vlinder is sag, jy moet om sag hanteer, anders gaan hy beseer word. So daai sagtheid, daai sag kins wat ons het, dit sal sy gedagtes bring na iets wat kalm is, iets wat hy kan sien, iets wat hy kan visualiseer, iets wat hy kan verstaan, en sy gemoedstoestand sal sommer dadelijk afkom. So dan kan jy sikke goed visualis visualisatie inbring en dit link met iets wat in sy verwysingsraamwerk is. Die skinlappers is vir my baie prachtig. Hulle laat my am um, blij in die binnenkant voel, en wanneer ek down is, kom ek altyd die so en kom kyk na hulle. Ek gaan die skinlappers want hulle is baie rustige dieren. Die reaksie wat ons krij die kinders uit, sal ek stel met een voorbeeld van een van die sienkies wat die so is. Hy het in isolatie gesit, want hy het nie die reels gevolg nie. So hy was baie af, want die kinders het allemaal, hulle was bezig met activiteite en hy kon net nie daaraan deelneem nie, want dit was nou deel van sy straf. En toe sê vir my, kom, kom help met die vlinders. En hy het ingestap, en hy kon sommer sy gezichtsuitdrukking sien, en hy was sommer net, dit het helemaal verander. En ek het vir hom gesê, ek wil nou weet precies hoeveel vlinders is in hierdie hokkie wat ons verleid. En hy het hulle begin tel, en hy het een gesien onder die blaarkie, en hy het vir my gesê, kyk oom, daar is een onder die blaarkie, en hy was so gelukkig daar oor en sy hele gemoedstoestand het net so verander. So het bloot om hulle net in te vat, en hulle in die omgeving bloot te stel, en om om bloot te stel in die vlinder, want ek neem, niemand sien gewoon ek een vlinder so naar ben, en hulle sien nie die proces nie, het sy gemoedstoestand opgekom. En dit is een baie nice voorbeeld om te gebruik. Op ander dieper vlakke sal ons gaan werk, oor een langer tydperk, maar dit was al wat hy op die stadium nodig gehad het, en dit was uitsteek. Die plan is definitief om ons schoonlapper project uit te brei, en ons kinde, of een kindige programmiekie te skryf vir ons kinders, en dan om ook die ge, um, geleentheid te gee aan ander skole, om die kinders te bring om te kom kyk, hoe werk skoenlappers en natuurlijk die therapeutische komponente daarvan, waar hy bekend te stel. The advice that I have for, for other schools, institutions and even businesses that would like to get their staff and more and kids more at an, an eased pace, where they are more productive and, and, and can work better, is to include something of nature which is like butterflies for example. Um, because it does relax people and gives people the chance to think more calmly. The farming industry of butterflies uh, started in America and has grown so much that it's now internationally all over the world. In South Africa it had started about eight years ago and has now expanded to where we're actually now sitting at breeding centers throughout the country. It has expanded at about 64% per year and uh, it involves a lot of people and a lot of work. This is why we set up these little uh, workshops where we can uh, educate people of exactly how to breed butterflies. Breeding butterflies is a, uh, a tricky business and has to be done exactly right. And to allow the industry to get a, a better foothold and to expand at a, a reasonable rate, uh, it is important to be able to educate people in that sense. When you start thinking of breeding butterflies, um 
you think it's only the butterflies, and it's not. There's a whole ecological concept that you need to take into consideration and the plants and the host plants and the nurturing of the host plants and the environment as well. Um, I think a lot of people focus only on the butterflies, but actually there's a bigger picture that you need to take into consideration to be able to establish your lipidome and to, to be able to maintain it. The most important challenge, I think, for any breeder is the environment that they find themselves in and where they're going to breed their, their butterflies. The second one is that it's got to be in an area that's suitable for the butterfly. Cold is another factor in, in your provinces where it gets extremely cold. So these are issues that have to be addressed and the lepidomes that are set up for the breeding of butterflies are designed specifically for those individual places as to accommodate uh, parasites uh, and as well as cold to avoid butterflies being damaged. The role of, of, of uh, butterfly breeders are supporting the local provincial butterfly sanctuary. And what, they, what they do is they have uh, various groups of breeders um, the breeders that are, are, are a bit larger than others are only four in the province and they have four other independent breeders that breed with them and they get supported by these four independent breeders and the PBBC then supports the butterfly sanctuary. The purpose of, of a network like this is to avoid any butterflies being destroyed by haphazard breeders. Um, there are some of them around. Um, conservation of butterflies along with um, South African Butterfly Breeding Association have put down these lepidomes and is establishing them to avoid any possibility of having butterflies interbred uh, or exotic butterflies brought into the country, which is uh, actually illegal. And it's controlled by them so that everyone has a very firm foothold and understanding of breeding our butterflies. The opportunities for beginner farmers for the commercial industry is huge. Um, rural areas especially have the opportunity where they can get involved. It's sustainability that uh, affords them an income and uh, allows them to be involved and participate in the breeding of butterflies throughout South Africa. Becoming a commercial butterfly breeder allows you to re-establish colonies back into the wild because you have to replace a certain amount of butterflies when you breed. It assists with um, conservation of butterflies but then also to make the public more aware of butterflies and, and the fact that you actually can breed butterflies. Because I'm already involved with the school, I would like to be more involved in terms of the educational and the therapeutic part of butterfly breeding. And again, to make the public, but also children aware of um, butterflies, the value of butterflies, the conservation of butterflies, and how you can actually breed them. I think you, you need the passion, but you also need the perseverance to start a centre and to be able to maintain it and to, to um, continue the service. At this precise moment and rate that it's growing, the opportunities are endless. Uh, there's many facets of a butterfly breeding sanctuary, simply because there are assets of, of uh, indigenous plants that have to be seen to, there is compost, there is... So it's really big and it can involve a, a lot of people that gives them the opportunities to, to be part of such a big uh, endeavor.